Engaging celebrity interviews. Exciting updates from Christian filmmakers. Movie reviews so you can choose your movies wisely. And so much more here on Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Faith on Film. Holly, how are you doing today? Doing great today. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited about what we've got on the show today. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we Today we're going to talk about Faith Films, which is pretty appropriate because the show is called Faith on Film, right? Um, we're going to be talking about a couple of movies. One that I saw, and I know you saw, that I thought was just an absolutely wonderful movie, and that is Cabrini, which I believe comes out in a couple of weeks. Uh, just yeah. a really great true story. Uh, yeah. And of course, we're also going to be uh, talking a little bit more again about The Chosen Season 4, because you went to see those first three yeah. episodes that came out in the theaters, and I know they were fantastic. So we're going to uh, we're gonna hear from you about that a little bit. But also, there's you ha you did an interview recently um, about a, a, a series, I believe it's, it's season two of this series that's on Pure Flix. Tell us a little bit about that. It's called Going Home, and it's mm -hmm. premiering season two, so it's been on Great American Pure Flix. And I had an, a chance to interview an actor who's been on a couple of shows, George mm -hmm. Newborn. You'll recognize him from um, Avengers and Babysitting and uh, Father of the Bride and movies like that. So he gave me a great interview about playing the role and what kind of story this really is, what kind uh -huh. of show this is that I think is going to encourage people. So let's take a look at the trailer. All right. Saying goodbye to a loved one is a beautiful, difficult thing. I do believe we will be together again. At Sunset House, we care for the spiritual, emotional, and physical needs of our clients. I appreciate everything you've done to support the kids in your I really don't want to go in there. The grieving process takes time, but you will be okay. And this place is home. Dad, no more surgeries. Please, do not give up. I'm not afraid to go home. I couldn't have stayed in my home without him. I love it when family takes care of each other. He's not dating anyone. Oh, okay. What about death frightened you? The judgments? What if God is waiting for you with open arms? Charlene. Hi, Mom. The doctors say, I'm not here for a long time, but I'm here for a good time. Your oncologist is George Strait. I love Psalm 62.8. God wants us to pour out our hearts to him. Lord, I want to live big. What a beautiful life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First of all, I read that you had the voice of Superman. So I love it that you, you know, played Superman or the voice anyway, right? And Yes, ma'am. I've been doing the voice of Superman for, oh, hello. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I love it. I love Hi. it. <laughs> He's on my shoulder. Yes, um, yeah, your alter ego. So you played. He's my alter ego. You played a Superman who saves people and a doctor who saves people. So I think you're exactly in good line. You're in good company. Um, you yeah. know this uh, this show. Of course, it's about healing and, and forgiveness right. and, faith and a lot of things. Um, but what does Doctor Jack do in this show? What is his role? Well, uh, he's, he's a pediatric oncologist, and uh, I, I mentioned earlier in an earlier interview, but he, you know, the, that that line of work, uh, they have a good success rate of actually healing people. Uh, it's it's a very high success rate, but as you get older, it's it's more difficult. So I think uh, uh, they've set him up in a situation where the irony is obviously his wife has cancer, and he can't heal her, he can't save her. So that is the uh, the sort of the drama that he is the, the, the sort of the what he's up against yeah. his personality does not do well with that okay. he's a fixer and most men are fixers <clears throat> most men try to fix things and uh, most uh women and or wives are much more uh were always smarter and and uh, more emotionally evolved uh -huh. and uh, don't want to be fixed they want to be listened to and they want to be you know so uh but so i think this doctor is dealing with his marriage and his professional uh uh limitations so he's he's up against it you know, and she's just saying, be with me. She's just saying, be here, be wow. present. And I'm, she was, she's good with that. And he's like, I, I don't want to just be here. I want to fix it. I want to fix it. Uh, so it's, it's a great, it was a good character. So it's a good character to play. Good character and good storyline mm -hmm. because a lot of people are doing very good. the very yeah. thing, right? I mean, yep. um, you know, I've lost both parents, mother to cancer yeah. and yes. father to a father. Same, same. 
Yeah. And when you watch people, and sister, I've lost a sister to breast cancer. When you watch oh, people with people, and they just want that time with right. you. That's that's going yeah. to hit home. So I feel like this show, yeah. in so many ways, is going to hit home for so many people in a good way. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And and uh, you know, initially I I seen the premise of the show and I was like, oh my, how are they going to do that? You know, and it's it is it's really tough. And uh, and and oddly enough, those are the kind of shows if you can if you can thread the needle in these sort of odd uh, you know uh, setups, the premise of the show, that it's usually a home run if you can if you can if you can get it it's those are big wins you know yeah. and uh and i think they do that here i think that the show is really well done and sort of uh the tone is just right and the writing is is good it doesn't hit you over the head and Cynthia's really sensitive you know the faith issues is I, i've known I, i've been a christian my whole life and i've had a lot of friends who are in sort of faith based you know entertainment and frankly the quality has not been great it just has not been that great and but people are so hungry for something positive they overlook the quality of things so so just as art for art for art's sake that speaks right. you know to people so but this is a this is a good example of faith and and good art that that works you know so that that's that's all I'm always happy to see that yeah. and because it's kind of dealing with some heavy things is the show always heavy is it something people can watch and still have lighter moments and and uh... I think the show does does a pretty good job of having a couple of light moments kind of funny in spots and and uh but it's real deep Real deep, <laughs> nothing, nothing really. Everything very serious is yeah. going down, you know. Uh, yeah. So, yes. Well, I'm because because uh, it's with Pureflix being on there, and then Sony, it's faith, faith and family entertainment. So I'm thinking, okay, right. for the audience, is it just going to be adults or can you know older kids or teens watch it as well? Is it something a family? I think watch? older kids and teens watch it. You know, you know what else? It just occurred to me. Um, what I think is really important about this show, and especially in America and Western America, we don't talk about death. Death yeah. is so sanitized. You know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, they used to lay people out in the house and people come by and look at the body. People don't yeah. see dead bodies anymore. And this yeah. is a bad thing. I think we need to be in, in touch with our mortality because then you really appreciate life. You know, it's, it's people go, oh my gosh, that person died. Yeah, we're all going to die. Right. So, so I think that we have stigmatized it so much in our, in our affluent, sanitized United States and West that we we don't we don't appreciate life because we don't appreciate death honestly is what the way I feel about it I think you know, you're so, so correct there and tr and also I know I experienced it with my when my sister died of breast cancer because she died at 58 and I'm like this is too young and she worked for a ministry who believed in me like yeah. miracles and healing sure, and I'm like sure. we had a lot of why god questions why god, right, why god? Right. and I think no one talks about that that's something yeah. that people are uncomfortable questioning god well he can take it <laughs> Well, why yeah. not? The question is more not why, but why not? Why not you? Yes. Who says that you get out of this? Who says that I get out of this? Right. I mean, we won the lotto already. We won the lotto yeah. already. Why not? Why shouldn't you have pain? That's 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 just what's so crazy. We think somehow, you know, you raise children and, and you they like, oh, you know, this, this is going wrong and that's going wrong. Why is it not working out? It's like, well, it's not supposed to work out. Sometimes it works out, but mm -hmm. this is not the, it's not the way this, this, this is planned that way. Otherwise, what are we doing? It's there's got to be struggle. There's got to be something that you come up against so that you have, you know, things have meaning. Yes. Me meaning has meaning when you have something to work against. Otherwise, meaning has no meaning. <laughs> you know right. So, what part uh, of George? What part of George is in Doctor Jack? What did you bring from yourself to your character? My brother, as I said, is a surgeon, so I, I sort of I try to sort of channel him a little bit in, in the way he's sort of you know uh, professional. He needs to be, and he's sort of lighthearted the next, you know. So it's about as far as I went with it. <laughs> well, I know you're on a few, a couple of the shows, and and of course they have seasons. Is it a character that can be brought back? I mean, I don't know how they do. That. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't think the show's set up that way. I think once somebody passes, it kind of that storyline goes, unless you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, was this the first faith-based? You know, you talked about faith-based entertainment. Was this the first one you worked I on? Don't, I did. No, I did one other one. Gosh, a long, long time ago. Uh, and uh, I, think it, I think it was Connie Selleck. I was in it. I played like a, a bit part. Just going. My friend produced it, so I was just went out there for the day. Yeah. Uh, it was not good. 
It was not good. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, after you've been in Bridges and Babysitting and Father of the Bride, and mm-hmm. you have a whole resume of shows and movies. I've got a lot, of, a lot of weird, diverse things I've done. Yes, a lot of great things. So, I mean, after yeah. that, again, it's kind of like, okay, but that, so I'm glad to hear you say that you felt this kind of raised the standard and came a bit different level because I feel the same way. About yeah. You. Some of the stuff is just so cheesy. You're like, uh, Talk about real, oh, I know. play real characters, do real things. And this is do real things. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. In this show. To Correct. Do, right. Right. And, and I think, you know, and I also think, you know, uh, I've been a Christian for a long time, but, you know, uh, our, our Christian, our Christian faith goes through seasons and it's not, you know, there's the, the especially, uh, I don't know how to say this. The, this, I feel like the, the American evangelical sort of version of, of Christianity sometimes can be too pat. Yeah. And I think that what I love about the mystics and the mystic, the, the old mystics in the early Christian church, there's, there's, where's there room for mystery in our faith and the Holy Spirit and mystery? There is, there is certain, there is certainty. God is, forgives us and there's life after death. I believe those are certain, but, but there's a lot of things in our faith that are, that are mysterious and we have to lean into that and not have it be so cut and dry all the time. There's just so much we don't know. And you have to have faith and you have to let, let things, let things breathe and have mystery. You know, that's, as I've gotten older in my faith and in my life, I have to be not so rigid and not hold on to things that I think are supposed to be a certain way and go, I'm going to let God work this out. I, I'm not, I'm not in control here, man. I, 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 I'm out, you know, you know, I don't want to say, well, the scripture says, the I don't want to do that. Anymore. <laughs> I'm just say, hey, man, I don't know. I know, I know it says this here, but also there's that. I understand. I see where you're coming from. I need to just, Back off the gas pedal here a little bit, I yeah. think, as you get older. Back off a little bit. What Did you grow up in the church or did you? No. Well, I, my parents took us to the, my parents would drop us off at the Methodist church for Sunday school. They didn't go. They would just oh, drop okay. us off and pick us up. <laughs> so I kind of, well, I mean, you know, it's in, in the South, going to the South, Christianity is cultural and less. That's true. That's it's cultural. True. Everyone, if you said everyone's a Christian in the South, but not everybody goes to church well. But in California, if you go to church, you're generally, you know, you're going to church. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, so that, so, so my, my, my exposure to, to my, to Christianity was through young life and high school. That, that's where, yeah. where I understood it and sort of became a Christian. But then, then as I've gotten older, you know, I've got a lot, there's just a lot of issues. You know, I've got, uh, uh, there are a lot of issues in the church today that I think that we have to kind of just not, not be so rigid about. Uh-huh. That's just as I feel like I've gotten older. But okay, I, I have to ask you, and I know it could be a long answer, but, was it yeah. or is it kind of tough being a Christian in Hollywood? Because I mean, I was been a film critic for thirty years. I remember reviewing movies in the nineties when you didn't even say you were a Christian. You just didn't speak that in Hollywood. It got better after the Passion of the Christ and other films. But is there still is it a climate or element where you don't really mention it or feel comfortable, or is it got better? well? I'll I'll, t- I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you this much. My faith is my faith, and I know a lot of uh, great Christian folks out here who are who are um, uh, working in the industry and then. But the current political climate, yes. um, I think, has been poisoned and co-opted uh, in a negative way by a, a very extreme element of the right. I'm just going to say it. We know what we're talking about. Yes. I think that has been co-opted and it's co-opted my faith. So I certainly don't speak it. Uh, if I say it in Hollywood, they're like, oh, then you must. And, that's, and I say, oh, no, I'm actually not that. But I am a Christian. That's so Christ, to me, we have got to really double down on separating Politics and faith, and because that's gotten mixed up, it's a losing proposition. And that is my biggest issue. I, I want my faith to be my faith, and I think if you get that out of the public, all that stuff is silly. Anyway, that's that's very upsetting to me. But but uh, but so to answer your question in Hollywood, especially now, I don't talk about it because yeah. I don't want to be branded a certain way because I'm certainly not. I don't want that because that's not me. Right. Whatever they're talking about, which is I don't love it. So, you know. Well, look up Hollywood Prayer Network if you don't know about it, because Karen Cavell. Hollywood, Hollywood what? Prayer? Hollywood Prayer Network. They pray okay. for people in the industry, and I mean right. executives, big people. Karen Cavell. Right. Connect with right. her. I know. I know. I know. Karen. I know Karen Cavell. I know. I know these guys. I, I probably know all those folks that you know. Uh, anyway, but, uh, yeah, for sure. Probably do. They're great. Oh, with a parting word about going home and why yes. people watch going home, and and how can we look for you and your character? Uh, I'm in the first two episodes of, okay. of Going Home, and. Um, Check it out. I, I feel like it's um, uh, it's very relevant to today, and especially with a lot of folks, you know, as you get older and your parents are getting older and you're de- we're all dealing with this hospice situation a lot now. And uh, I think it's a comforting and a smart uh, show that deals with a universal issue, which is getting older and dying or sick and dying. And um, I think it's important for us to 
see it done the way they 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 do it. So I think it's I think it's an excellent show. And did Dan Merchant um, direct you? He did. He did. Because really good, really good guy, really good director. Really, really enjoyed it. I was wondering because he has such a diverse background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know as, as much. Yeah, he's been doing it a long time, but he's he's really, I really, I really think he's found the perfect tone on that show. And and uh, it, the crew loves him and uh, just a good guy, low key. No, I, I'm I'm a big fan of no yelling on a set. And there's no no one raises their voices, and that is important because there's no reason to do that. No, that means you're not running your set well. You're not running the set well when that happens. So he's great. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Any other favorite moments? And we can then part any other favorite stories or something that happened while doing this show that was maybe one of your favorite scenes? Uh, why, blah, 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 um, uh, <laughs> nothing during this show. I mean, it was very just sort of a very chill environment. You know, um, yeah. I love being in Spokane, Washington. Gorgeous up there. People very lovely. Uh, it's nice to get out of L.A. You know, I love it. I had a great time. George, we will have our audience pray for you and your career. And thank you. Yes. For thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate really it. I appreciate it. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the Thank show. you. Thank you so much. For all prayers appreciated and back at you and all around. Thank you. You know, um, that was a great interview with George. I, I thought it was really, uh, I loved it because he touched on so many different areas mm-hmm. of the show and what it does. And of course, the the lead actress and people, Cynthia Geary, who plays the main nurse and so others. In fact, the one who plays the girl, Cozy, she was mm-hmm. in um, uh, Dolphins 1 and 2, who I interviewed her years ago. Oh, so yeah. it's interesting to see her now in a pure flicks film. So, But it's a good story. I mean, a lot of people don't want to talk about death, really. So it's probably a good show for that, isn't it, Isaac? Yeah, I, I, you know, I was really caught off guard there by something that he said, uh, but I completely agreed with it. And that was that he mentioned how we just don't want to deal with death anymore. You know, back in back in my day, and I know I do remember this in my own family, they literally sometimes when somebody would die, they would have the body there in yeah. your in your living room while all the family came by for sometimes even a good couple of days and we just don't do that anymore uh, and, and i don't know i don't know if it's good or bad uh, i think it's good for kids even to kind of experience what death is all about because you know life as as uh, dave mentioned it or uh, george mentioned it it does have an end i mean we we will die at some point it, it does. And I never, we didn't have the culture or religion, I guess, where you had the body in the room. Yeah. But I do remember going to the funeral home. The first death in my family was my uncle at 13. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, kind of traumatic. My grandmother after that, she was cremated. So there was a memorial service for her. But to see my uncle in the coffin at the front of the church, because that was kind of the tradition right. yeah. for some church, you have it in the front, my cousin. But after that, kind of got to where people were being cremated. I know in my family, that's been the case with my grandmother yeah. my parents. Yeah. But my parents have passed. They were cremated. So it, you re, it's really more a memorial service, I guess, that we do nowadays and, and maybe um, a celebration service, mm-hmm. they sometimes call it. Maybe that's the way different people deal with it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and it, uh, it is called cultural because I know like my mom. See, I want to be cremated. I actually want to be cremated yeah. and I want to be dumped on the lake here where I live. I, I just I love the lake and that's where I want Aww. that's where I want to rest in peace. My mom, we've been telling her and my, and my dad, they're up in age and we say, you know, we're thinking maybe we should cremate you, and she will not have that. She wow. said, no. And, and my, my dad is kind of like, yeah, you know what? That's and she's like, no, not for you either. Culturally, they want to have the body there, and, and then that you know laid to rest in a in a burial. So it probably is a cultural thing, man, apparently, <laughs> yes. you know, and maybe more the old school because these days I think Very people much. just are going for the memorial service. Well, Very it's an interesting much. show, folks. So tune in; you'll learn a lot, and I think you'll relate a lot with a lot of the stories of people with cancer. And you know, you probably yeah. had it in your own family, your own home. Mm-hmm. So, but it's not all heavy and depressing. There's some lighter moments, like George said, and it's really yeah. good as well. Now, something that we're going to talk about. I'm so excited. Because yes. there's a movie coming out called Cabrini. And it is, first of all, it was done by a friend of Isaac and I. We've had on the show, Mont- Alejandro, Alejandro Monteverde, oh, who did The Sound of Freedom. And so he's a director for this. And I, with, I Isaac's going to tell you, too, it is the most beautifully filmed, well done movie about a true story about a woman who's now the saint. She was a mother in the Catholic Church in Italy. And about how she first came to America when. Mm, people weren't so friendly for the people coming over from other countries. They had nicknames that weren't so nice for the Irish and the Italian and <laughs> okay. and others. And it really deals with what she went through to help the poor. Isaac, what did you think about the movie? I was I was blown away. It just was. Uh, first of all, I love true stories. Um, yes. And, and this was something that I had never heard about. I had never heard of, of Cabrini. Uh, and just to to see her and what she accomplished was unbelievable. I mean, she raised hospitals all over the world. 
over the world. So she was a missionary to the world. And she fought against men who at that time were not even acknowledging women. Right, exactly. Yeah, we didn't have a voice in the church or business. I mean, either place. And she fought that. And, you know, we're telling you all this so that when you watch the trailer, which we're going to show you, look at the scenes. Look at how it was filmed. Oh. Look at the, it's just a beautifully done, like paintings in a movie. I, I'm excited for people to see this. So let's take a look at the trailer. My sisters, if we are to build an empire of hope, it seems we must first conquer New York. The filthy dagos, they just keep coming. Mio papà si è suicidato. E mia mamma è morta di tifo. In America, the greatest nation on earth, rats have it better than the children of five points. It's not safe. Not for you. Be careful. This place will eat you alive. I need an orphanage with more room, where my children can be children. I'd like you to keep your crime and your filth out of this neighborhood. The mayor will find a way to get you out. You have an election coming up, do you not? I believe I am being threatened by a nun. You have swatted the hornet's nest. Get out, Jaggles! Go! I want the best hospital for your people and for mine. We have to show America we are all people of dignity. This project is overly ambitious, perhaps unrealistic. We are bold. Or we die. This is how I learned to live in America. Cabrini, you would have made an excellent man. <laughs> what they didn't include in the trailer was their response to him, something to the effect of when he said, you'd made a great man, she said, no, because only a woman could do what I've done. Because it's true. Mm -hmm. Only yeah. a woman could do what she did. Um, folks, this is put out by Angel Studios. It's another one of the wonderful mm -hmm. Angel uh, productions, and they're distributing it. It stars uh, Christiana Delana, and she is the one who plays, um, amazingly, Cabrini. Uh, John Lithgow, if you'll notice, you heard his voice. It's unmistakable. He has um, played the mayor. And then uh, David Morse plays the pope, or the pope, the priest. The priest. I think it's over. What is he a priest? The one that's over? I'm not Catholic. I don't know. The one that was over the diocese or whatever. Yeah, you know? he, he's he's something. I think he. I don't know. He's something big in the uh, in the Catholic Church. Yeah, well, he was at the time <laughs> something big in the Catholic. I'm sorry, folks. It's my ignorance, but but you know what? You recognize David Morris. We used to be in ER. I mean, years ago he started off. He's been yeah. in World War II. He's been in a bunch of movies. So. You know, he's at, so they had some, you know, notable names in there. But yeah. again, so beautifully done, such a powerful story. We cannot encourage you enough to see this movie. And yes, at the very beginning, it's a lot of Italian because they're in Italy. But don't right. worry, and there's subtitles, but don't worry. Then they trans into American. She says, now we need to speak American. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying, bear with it because I had someone say, well, it kind of has a lot of it, uh, subtitles, and I didn't want to sit through the whole thing. No, no, no. It, it gets into English where you can understand that. But I love that. I yeah. love some movies. And uh, in the very near future, we're going to try to get uh, one of the actors or or maybe uh, the director, uh, Alejandro, to come on the show and tell us a little bit more about the movie and, and maybe some of the behind the scenes are. stuff. So uh, we're working on that. We'll keep you updated. But it's coming yes. out the end of February. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what next. Else? I got a chance to go see The Chosen Season 4. Yes, and you it, did. Okay, first of all, I'm going to tell you it's three hours and 20 minutes, but they give you an intermission, so they give you a five-minute intermission, okay. so hang on, hold your popcorn, you get a chance <laughs> to take a break, and, but I, you know what, it went so fast, Isaac, I just wanted to continue, I wanted to keep going, I'm like, no, no, yeah. no, keep, keep it going, um, it, it is powerful storytelling, uh, definitely a shift in the fact that now it, the heat is coming on the disciples and on Jesus and on mm -hmm. and really on the on the town, the Capernaum and the whole area, the, it's coming pressure now, you know, for them to um, because they're getting pressure from Rome for money and taxes, and right. then of course John the Baptist. We know that's his story, and that story happens, and it's I'm not killing the I'm not surprising anybody, I'm not spoiling anybody because <laughs> it was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen. There is a surprise at the end of episode three. Um, I will tell you to, to bring your tissues and make sure you have napkins or tissues with you. I 
got, I heard that ahead of time and I still needed them. Uh, there's several lighthearted, funny moments, funny comments, and then sweet and tender moments. I just love this show. And with every season, it gets better. And they talk about the um, the wedding and the old wedding feast, the feast where the bride and the groom could actually ask each other if they would accept each other. And if the bride accepts, then the groom gives her a present. Then they're, um, for, they're betrothed for a year and they don't see each other, really, or they're betrothed. And then they get married. And that's the old custom. And, folks, that is the whole lanterns the virgins and their lamps and the oil that's from that story that story is based on that custom so it's about jesus coming back for his bride so it meant so much to me to see that in the movie and see it played out with a couple of the characters yeah well let's take a look at the trailer it would appear that we now want the same thing as pilot senior leaders in every district should question and expose jesus I just can't stop seeing how we could be doing things faster and more efficiently. You deserve a stipend for your specialized work. You can at least make sure that you have resources to keep the mission going. My ledgers are in the red. I told you to make life difficult for the followers of Jesus. It is on this rock that I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. infernal chaos. Why can no one control these people? What just happened to all of you? It's about to get worse. Now that I'm here, physical death does not interrupt our eternal life. Lazarus! Come out! Remember you wishing there could be another way. And looking back, I do too. I still don't know why it has to be this way. The bitter often mingled with the sweet. You told us it would be like that. With how you lived. The man of sorrows. Acquainted with grief. It is so good. It is so good. It just it reminded is. me because we we hear Simon called a different name, Peter, and so he gives the whole thing. When he said the gates of hell, that was called that. That area was called that, which makes so much sense now that the scripture said even the gates of hell can't stand against. And he was yeah. referring to that religion. That I mean, it, there's so much he'll get. I just love it. I love what Dallas Jenkins is doing with the show. We cannot encourage everyone enough. And you yes. know what? I love it. The big theater, Isaac amazingly different on the big screen so uh yeah get out there i know you i think that you can't watch the episodes one through three anymore no. because they only do it for a weekend but get out there and watch the others and nonetheless Not when there. it's when it's past it it's going right. to come out as streaming so make sure and watch it right. if you didn't get to see it in theaters make sure and watch it well holly we've run out of time it was a great <laughs> show i loved all the things we talked about go <laughs> see everything folks go see it bye-bye now Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.